Hey y'all, what's going on? It's your girl Tay and I'm back yet again with another video. So definitely welcome or welcome back to She Built Healthy Wealth. So today we're going to discuss a little bit about what's going on with the stimulus news. We're going to talk about what's happening when it comes to the tax season that's getting ready to be upon us. And then a couple of other little sprinkle sprinkles here and there. So definitely make sure you guys smash that like button, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't, plus push your post notification bell button so that way anytime I upload a video, you will be notified. Okay, I I am looking a little bit shiny around here. All right. Anyways, so I am going to run through the names of the months that have been approved for emergency SNAP benefits for the month of November, but have not yet received their um, benefits. And then I'm also later on in the video going to run through the names, not the payout dates, but just the names of the states that have been approved for emergency SNAP benefits for the month of December. So stay tuned for that. But really quickly, the few months, no, the few states that are left that have not received their benefits for November, California, we will receive them December 20th, Hawaii, December 10th. Idaho, December 11th through the 15th, Kansas, December 15th through the 24th, South Dakota, December 20th, Vermont, December 14th, Wyoming. Now, I still have not found any dates. However, I, what I'm seeing in terms of the disbursement dates for the, the states, generally they use similar dates to the previous month. Now, it's not always like that. So I know that you guys receive benefits, I believe around, uh, I want to say... Um, I want to say it was kind of close to what this is, but I'm not totally sure. So let me not give you guys that information because I know I was overlooking at a lot of different states to see what their disbursement dates will be. And I think the state that I'm thinking of right now is Texas. I know that Texas, the, even though they were approved for November and they've also been approved for December, I have not been able to find the disbursement dates, but I know that for the month of November, Texas actually received their benefits, I believe between the 9th and the 13th of November. So I don't want to give that information for Wyoming, um, but Nebraska, December 8th. Okay. So let's talk about stimulus, you guys. CNN, Fox News, ABC, all of them have been lighting up this morning with all these different discussions from people from Senate um, discussing what they're willing to accommodate in terms of the stimulus pass a package and what they're not. So what they're saying is this is not a stimulus package that they are looking at. It is a relief bill, not a stimulus package. There's a difference, which to me, honestly, it doesn't really make a difference. I don't care what you call it. I don't care if you call it Santa Claus wish list. I just believe that they need to hurry up and do something and all of the funding and stuff that they are talking about, which we're going to get into in just a second, seems to be geared towards people who already have employment. But there's a lot of people out there that don't have a job. So they can't rely on things like unemployment, even though that is scheduled to um, end and expire at the end of December. There's a lot. What we do know is that there seems to be bipartisan support for the $908 billion package, okay? Both sides are in agreement that funding is needed to help curb the dangerously rising cases and concerns regarding the pandemic. The plan is to reach about approximately 75% of the population in terms of um, vaccination, but a new proposal from a former Democratic congressman for Maryland suggests giving $1,500 stimulus checks in exchange for receiving the vaccine. Now, here's the problem with his proposal. And first of all, let me just tell you guys that this is not a formal proposal. This is basically just his opinion, him just saying, I think we should do this. But there's no written text that has been circulated um, in the White House to put this even on the table okay so obviously about 58 percent of the american people when um conducting a poll said that they are willing to get the vaccination others are genuinely worried afraid or just don't want a vaccine another issue is obviously the cost this proposal would tack on an additional $380 billion onto this relief package when the previous stimulus checks only put $270 billion on. So, I mean, we've got the Democrats who are still trying to negotiate on our behalf saying that they want to stay within the realm of this $900 billion package, but then we still have the Republican leadership standing firm at around $500 billion. He's not even for the amount of the of the proposal that's currently out there. He wants them to stay around $500 billion. So, you know, there's a lot of fluctuations when it comes to the stimulus bill. I know that Bernie Sanders has just recently said that he's not for this bill at all because he believes that they should just put the $1,200 stimulus checks. And I have to agree. And honestly, this Congressman Delaney says that they should have just given us 
us the stimulus checks. You know, and I'm, I'm glad that we have people that are speaking on our behalf because, like I said, these programs that they're talking about in this bill, the PPP liability protection and all of that, that is to protect corporations. That is to say that if a person goes to work and they get um, sick, then they are not protected. The company is protected, which to me, I mean, you know, I'm trying to stay in the middle of this. Uh, I don't want to seem like I'm for one side and for the other. To, to, to be completely honest, I don't care for none of them. That's just my personal opinion. You guys may feel differently about it. I'm not for or against anybody. I don't particularly care for nobody. I believe that they are all positioning themselves and saying things and bringing up things as a way to make themselves look good so that they can appeal to uh, speak on our behalf and the things that we need. But I don't necessarily feel that that's the case. But we're going to get off of that, you guys. So that's what's going on with the stimulus news. As far as I know right now, even though he has put this out there, they are not including the $1,200 stimulus check in this uh, relief package. What they are including in this, um, which I did just hear this morning, is they do want to add the, like I said, the PPP protection. They do want to extend the unemployment. And there's some other programs that are due to expire at the end of December that they also want to put into this bill. But one of the most important things that I do think will help a lot of people is uh, rent assistance. And this time they want to help not only the people who are actually renting, but the landlords. So it's the, it hasn't been put into the proposal as a formal um, proposal but they are suggesting or they are trying to negotiate putting some type of text in this relief package that states that hey you know it will help the landlords provided that they do not evict their tenants okay so like I said it's not currently in the um proposal that they're discussing but they're working on trying to add that in so moving on let's talk about tax news not a whole lot of excitement going on with taxes um, we know that the tax season usually opens up in january the last M monday in the, um, the last monday in january um Tax filing deadline this year, of course, was extended past April 15th due to the pandemic. Um, as of now, no news has circulated to express a delay for the tax season in 2021 for our current year. Considering what's currently going down, being prepared, you guys, for any money that you can rely on, in my opinion, is just good business and great general financial housekeeping. So I'm speaking about your taxes, obviously. you For most of us, if you're not rich, if you're not wealthy, the only thing that you can rely on at the end of the year if you've worked is uh, your tax refund. And for a lot of us, that does lend a lot of support and help for us to get caught up with bills or to invest in new business ventures or whatever it is that you want to use that money for. So I will be discussing some of the companies that do provide, provide tax preparation. Um, I'm going to highlight the tax refund advances that you can get. Now, this video is not sponsored, obviously, but again, these are resources that my friends and I do use because you can get sometimes between two to four thousand dollars in an advance of your refund and it doesn't cost you anything there's no interest rates or anything like that so I know there's a lot of you who are probably already aware so I'm speaking to the ones who obviously do not know about this who do not have a clue that they can get an advance on their tax refund okay so this is just a little bit of a, I want to say, a little bit of a timing schedule that I wanted to share with you guys. It may change. We don't know what's going to happen. They're still currently trying to avoid a government shutdown. And honestly, we don't know how, if that does actually happen, if the government does actually go into a shutdown, if that's going to affect tax affect the tax, the IRS opening and doing what they're supposed to do at their normal um, time rate. So provided that everything stays pretty normal, you guys. The e-filed returns accepted between January 25th to March 22nd should be received by February 5th to April 9th. Now, let me just break that down just a little bit further. So if you do your, if you file your, re your refunds electronically, um, the first date that you can receive your uh, refund direct deposit is February 5th. Now, if you have opted to receive your check paper check, then you can expect to receive your paper check a week from February 5th and so on, okay? So January 25th to January 22nd, 22nd is when you file your returns electronically. You can expect to receive them between February 5th to April 9th, all right? Okay, 
Um, obviously, not a whole lot has changed when it comes to returns that are including the earned income tax credit or child tax credit. Funds are sure to be delayed for processing till late February. So don't expect the IRS to get to those refunds that have claimed those credits until at least the end of February, okay? Student loan payments have been paused and extended through January 31st for federally held loans and will continue with a 0% interest rate. If you are enrolled in the public service loan forgiveness program, payment plan, you will still receive credit towards the forgiveness program as long as you are still employed full-time by a qualifying employer, okay? Now, I am going to read off the names of the states that have been approved for December emergency snap. Alabama, Arizona, California, D.C., Georgia, Florida, Hawaii, Idaho, Iowa, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Maine, Missouri, Mississippi, Montana, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. So that's it, you guys. I have read you guys' comments. I am still researching information. I'm trying to work up enough information to present to you guys in the next video regarding utility assistance and um, other resources, like I said, that you can utilize just in case you are not employed and you don't have access to unemployment funds, okay? So stay tuned for the next video for that. I'll also go over the payout dates for the month of December for emergency snap. All right, you guys? Oh, one more thing that I wanted to leave for you guys, in light of this whole social distancing effort that they're trying to put into place, you guys, I highly suggest that for those of you who are receiving EBT benefits currently, if you do not know, you can sign up for an Amazon Prime membership, which I will leave a link for that in the description box below, as well as links to the equipment that I use to record my videos for those of you who are also just deciding or starting out your YouTube channel or whatever type of content that you're doing, I will leave links for that in the description box below. So that's all I want to say to you guys, but definitely check that out. EBT recipients can get an Amazon Prime membership at a discounted rate of $5.99, which is pretty good. And I think you're going to need it because I know that they are putting the hammer down on us down here. They are shutting it down and it's going to be pretty tough to go out there and do Christmas shopping. If you are doing Christmas shopping, I would suggest that you guys sign up if you don't already have a membership and have your packages delivered and do it that way. But you know what? That's just my opinion. Like I said, it is what it is, but I'll definitely see you guys in the next video. Peace.